Africa. No food, no water, children dying of hunger. This is the picture of Africa we have in our minds. But actually, you might not know that in the edge of Sahara Desert lives a Kanembu tribe in which, despite the bad lands, despite the purity, they don't have a problem with malnutrition. They grow something that supports their poor diet with proteins, with vitamins. And it was so important for them that it was used as a currency. So they grow a life gold. And today, the time has come for us living in Western countries to learn from them and to come back to our roots. And I will tell you today about the thing. But first, let's focus a little bit on yourself. Between your birth and your death, you're given a time. Give me some time. <laughs> time for family, for relations, for work, and for passion. And what gives an energy for us is a food. We are empowered by food. And actually, we are like cars. We go to the kitchen, like to petrol station. We fuel up and carry on. And what is, we as a scientist do, we try to figure out how it works. We take our cells under microscope. We track the compounds. And the true is universal. The better petrol, the faster you go. And from the molecular level of view, the quality of the food equals the quality of the life. And it's so easy to understand and so hard to do. And if you to prove that, I will tell you that the life, lifespan of people, from just from the better nutrition, has extended from 30 years in the early 20th century to 80 years today. If you don't believe, try not to eat for six weeks and you will be dead. And try not to eat, try to eat bad food and you will die younger. Well, we eat every day. I eat for 26 years, you eat for 40, 50. And during our life, we will eat approximately 55 tons of food. It's like more 70 cows, like on this picture, I counted by myself. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. and you know, <laughs> yeah, the startup people have, they said they don't have time, but I did. So, um, guys, did you ask yourself a question? What's the most complete and nutritious food on earth? You're looking for better smartphones, fast cars, and do you know what's the best food to eat? And my question today for you is, what do you think? Is it a kind of meat? Please raise your hand. Who thinks that is a kind of meat? One person, whoa. <laughs> yeah, so you really don't know. What do you think? Maybe it's a kind of plant. Somebody? Like five people, okay. And may, or maybe it's something different, something totally different. Some kind of microbe. Is there anybody? Yeah, I see <laughs> one crazy person who thinks that is bacteria, okay. <laughs> okay, I know the answer. And it took me some time to find it out. And today I'll tell you just my short story how I found it. So. During my studies, I had two hobbies, motorbikes and viruses. Both are horrible <laughs> hobbies because they might be lethal, right? So this is an HBV virus. Despite there being a vaccine, it kills one person every 30 seconds. So till I finish my talk, like 30 people will die. I hope nobody of you is infected, actually. So. It's 100 times more uh, dangerous, more infective than HIV. And I was holding it in my hands every day for 12 months 
to make my master's degree. And I developed a test that detected this DNA of this virus in blood samples. And here comes an interesting story about that, because when I finished my studies, I got a job, and you know, you have to make some blood tests, right? And when I get my results, I was so scary, because some levels of the enzymes were the same as in, my, as in the blood of my patients, of my infected patients. So I thought, my God, during developing the test, I got infected, and that would be the horrible, the most horrible thing in my life, the most stupid. So then, what did I do? I used my test to check my blood, and finally it was negative. So what comes out, <laughs> I did my blood test, the first one, after hard drinking night. So then I told myself, no viruses and no drinking at all. And then I started to work with that. These little uh, colorful dots are brain cancer cells. They are like space invaders. They conquer your brain, they grow, and they kill you slowly. But sometimes they look quite sweet, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, they are sweet. <laughs> But, you know, it wasn't the thing I would like to spend my four or five years with the subject of cancer. And then I started to wonder if there is something in this huge microscopic world that doesn't kill but support the life. Something that I would like to work and have fun and tie my life. And I started to search, and I found the thing that people in Africa know from ages, and it was the laugh from the first sight. Let me introduce a spirulina. Uh, under the microscope, it looks like little green uh, spirals, hence the name. This is the most balanced and the best, the most nutritious food in the world. These little cells have every particle your body needs to live long and to stay healthy. Pirulina is a green microalgae, so it's a bacteria. Normally it lives in alkaline freshwaters like Chad Lake, and it turns the sunlight into nearly every particle our body needs to live. It was at the earth from the appearance of life. It was one of the first organisms that was making the oxygen for all the others. And it's at the beginning of the food chain. And today, sp uh, dig this, that. Daily dose of spirulina, which is a one tablespoon, is three grams. And it's equal to eating three kilos of different vegetables and fruits with regards of vitamin and minerals, but not, it's not the end. It has all essential proteins, all amino acids, like in one glass of milk, and all fatty acids, omega-3 and 4, you might hedge off, they are good for your heart, as in one fish serving. So imagine all that amount of food squeezed in just three grams, and multiplying indefinitely just thanks to sun and to water. That's the superfood. But it's not only a food, it also has a lot of uh, substances like antioxidants that works antiviral and anti-cancer. And scientists now check it for that it's good for diabetes, for allergies, for HIV and many else, so it's not only the food, but it's also a cure. Today, spirulina is grown in big tanks, and then, unfortunately, it's dried, and then a lot of good compounds die. I've tried it, you can buy it in a pharmacy or by the internet, and despite it's, it's a superfood, it's super ugly. It stinks, the, the dried form. It stinks like um, food for fish. So 
I think you have ever smelled it. Right, but the good thing is that fresh spirulina has neutral taste and um, a natural smell, right? But the bad information is that you can't get it commonly. I don't know why. <laughs> so my question is, have you ever tried the spirulina before? Guys, best food in the world. Ooh, like seven people. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and what about the rest? What about the rest? Guys, don't you want to live long? <laughs> yeah, I know. You live in a hurry. You don't have a time to think about balanced diet. So, what you, you eat junk food. Uh, it's normal. And uh, who have ever eaten a cheeseburger? Uh, everyone. It's a shame to say it, isn't it? <laughs> right? And so, not to feel guilty what you do next. Very often you buy dietary supplements. 75% of Americans buy dietary supplements. I think that you ever try, for example, vitamin C. And you know, guys, you may be literally pissing away your hardly earned money because uh, the supplements are not the nutritional wonders the industry would have us believe, really. Uh, so what happened next? You develop these diseases. And then people like me, poor students, scientists, spend hours in the labs fighting, trying to find a cure, risking their lives, right? <laughs> That's the truth. And today I want to say stop, stop fake food, stop fake vitamins, and start eating smart. It's not so Part, right? People in Africa already know it. The scientists know it. The NASA want to feed its astronauts with spirulina. Spirulina has been proposed to be the major food during close lasting uh, space missions. So, okay, space, Africa is quite far. So, how about you? How about me? So, we with my friends, we are working on a device that will produce fresh spirulina at your home automatically. The only thing you have to do is just put the spirulina, water and starting culture, the nutrition, you press the button and you get the fresh spirulina every day, whatever you want. So I think that's the future of our kitchens. What you can do with the spirulina? Actually everything, because it has, as I told, the natural taste you can add it to any food you want, to soup, to pasta, to drink, some banana smoothie, whatever. You can even feed your animal with that. Actually, uh, the breeders, for example, of uh, racing horses, use it as a secret ingredient. And as far as I know, the sportsman that goes to the Olympic Games eat like 15 grams spirina a day, and it's their secret as well. And good information for girls, it's so nutritious that you can put it on your face and have organic, homemade mask. So it's estimated that 30% of algae produced in the future we're going to use in the kitchen. So that's the future of our nutrition. And the rest will empower our cars, will empower our buildings. And actually, that's the future that is happening right now. This building was opened last year in Germany. And at the end, I'd like to think about a little bit about your future, guys. Well, <laughs> you are really what you eat. You are what you eat. Once, my friend told me, hola, Show me what you eat and I will tell you who you are. I didn't remember it eating sexy bees that morning, but he was true. And you know, don't be cheap, fake, fast as a hamburgers. Because the food, your body, builds your cells from the food you eat. And you have a choice of what you are made of.
So guys, I, I wish you a good choices and I hope that Spirina will soon settle down into your houses, onto your plates. Thanks. Thank you.